Good evening, everyone. This meeting uh, of the uh, Weathersfield ZBA is being recorded for Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. All right, thank you, Charles. Good evening and welcome to the September 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. We will start uh, with our public hearing. We have just one application tonight. And again, we'll walk through and make sure everybody's had plenty of opportunity um, for any comments and questions during the hearing portion. And then we'll have a motion and a vote to move into our public meeting where we have one old business item and then we have our uh, discussion and vote on tonight's application. And then we'll have some other business at the end. So with that, um, I'm gonna get us rolling and just read the application in. So it's application number 6251-21 variance to allow two additional accessory structures on the residential portion of a split zone partial, parcel, pardon me, to facilitate the storage of a plow truck and other maintenance equipment for the business use on the property. Location 82 Wolcott Hill Road, applicant Southside Partners, LLC. Uh, Charles, if you would, would you begin us with an overview of the staff report? Sure, Mr. Chairman. So, um... Just to give you some background to this application, uh, 82 Walcott Hill Road is a 1.11 acre parcel, which is described as a split zone parcel, of which approximately 20% of the land in the rear of the property, that is to the eastern end of the property, is zoned single family residential, and that's a zone B residential district. And the major portion um, is the commercially zoned uh, section of the uh, property that is in the general business zone, otherwise known as the GB district. So um, back in November 25th, 2013, the ZBA denied application number 6135-13 for a request to expand the non-conforming garage as shown in shaded red on your um, one of your exhibits uh, there. And um, with the new expansion shown in shaded green, and that's on exhibit C. So also in your list of exhibits, there's a letter from the building official that he sent to the owners, uh, Southside Partners LLC, dated December 2nd, 2013, ordering that the extension, which has been already constructed, be removed within 30 days of receipt of the notice, which is exhibit A1, because of the ZBA denial. So uh, on December 22nd, 2014, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals approved the variance for expansion of a legal non-conforming use for a commercial accessory building used for related business purposes on residential portion of a split zone parcel with the stipulations as follows. And it says, uh, number one, deliveries between the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. And number two, a building permit must be obtained. And that can be seen on exhibits B1 and B2. This expansion relates to the section of the building shaded green in exhibits C. So being the original existing accessory building, uh, the, the building was approved as, a, as an ex accessory structure to store archived files relating to the office building. The records show that on October 15, 2015, a notice of violation was sent out to Southside Partners regarding complaints received alleging that business slash contracting operations is being conducted on the residential section of the property. The letter further states that the Planning and Zoning Commission approved the one bay of the garage for storage of items and documents or files that would not be in current use and that there was no approval for a contractor's yard. 
that can be seen on exhibit D. So on November 25th, 2020, this office received an email from a resident complaining that a large structure is being built on the subject property and inquired if a permit was granted for the structure. A check of the department's record uh, did not show a permit being issued for this structure. So I then sent a cease and desist order in my capacity, of course, as zoning enforcement officer to the property owner dated November 25th, 2021. And the enforcement order required him to cease and desist from construction of any structure on the residential property. Also to cease and desist from using the garage base for storage other than files or items related to the office building, which will not be used on a day-to-day -day basis. Cease and desist all work from this property or the storage of material and equipment or vehicles on this property that is not in keeping with the ZBA approval within 10 days of receipt of this notice. And this can be seen on exhibit E. On receipt of the order, the owner requested a meeting with myself and the town manager on the basis that, and I quote, my assertions warrant conversation. We found it necessary to include the director of planning in this meeting. So a meeting was eventually held between myself, the director of planning, Mr. Uh, Peter Gillespie and uh, town manager on February 8th, 2021. At the meeting, Mr. Carbone was advised that he needs building permits for the two additional structures as he could not just construct these, these, these structures um, without returning to the ZBA to get their approval and then apply for the required building permit. It was agreed to stay the matter of um, the illegal structures until the request is heard. And um, this was communicated to the applicant that if the variance is denied, then of course the structures have to be removed. And, and usually when something like this occur, um, a, a building is constructed, something is done um, without approval first, we, it's customary for us to work with the, um, with the applicants and say, okay, if you're going to go to the ZBA um, for a variance, then we will, in most cases, we will hold off until um, and see the outcome of the ZBA. And we've done that in a, in a number of cases. Uh, so this office received an application from the owner, that Southside Partners, of course, on June, 20, June 7, 2021, requesting a variance to allow the use of temporary structures on site to be used to facilitate maintenance equipment and a plow truck for the removal of snow on the property. Of course, um, the applicant ref uh, referred to these as temporary structures, but they were not meant to be um, temporary structures at all. They, are meant to be um, permanent on the site for, for housing of these um, snow plowing uh, vehicle and other equipment. So um, a variance was granted for the expansion of the non-conforming use. And that is to extend the existing two bay garage um, structure on the residential parcel, which apparently had been deemed legally non-conforming. On examination of the variance that is being requested on June 7, 2021, I double checked the regulations and noted that um, section 10.4 F2 says that no use variance shall be granted by the ZBA, which would permit A, a use prohibited either implicitly or explicitly by these regulations and B, the expansion of a non-conforming use. 
So based on the foregoing, I, I was uncertain as to whether I should have the applicant return to the ZBA since the board had granted the expansion of the non-conforming building in the first place. So on June 10, 2021, I saw the legal opinion of the town attorney and received the following response. The response I get from the um, attorney and I quote, uh, if the scope of prior approvals authorizes the use of the 82 Walcott Hill property, it is possible that the structures related to that use can be considered a permitted use and in parentheses, uh, permitted by variance and not be expansion of a non-conforming use. But if the application was very narrowly tailored, then you might be in the quandary that it is not permitted without a variance and the variance is not permissible by the express language of the regulations. After forwarding the application and the minutes to the town attorney, he, he, he further requested the application and, and um, the minutes so that he could make a further determination. So after those were forwarded to him, he sent me the following opinion on August 4th, 2021. And again, I quote uh, the attorney saying, I reviewed all of the materials regarding your question on the above reference matter. I believe it comes down to whether we are really talking about a non-conforming use. Quote, unquote. That would apply if the residentially zoned area where these new structures are, have been constructed for vehicle equipment storage was devoted to that purpose prior to the adoption of the regulations. The, the nomenclature used by attorney Ranelli suggested that the larger existing building, pre-existed zoning, and, um, and was a non-conforming building slash use, and that he was seeking to expand it. Turning to these new structures, these are the two uh, structures in question now, there would be an expansion of a non-conforming use only if that area of the property had been used for this kind of purpose prior to zoning and now they're proposing the temporary structures as part of that existing, pre-existing use. In that case, you would be able to approve the structures if the applicant demonstrated the long-standing use of that area of the site for this use and these structures do not expand the use but I, uh, are directly related to it. For example, if a contractor's yard existed, existing in a residential zone prior to zoning and vehicles and materials have long been stored on the site, a proposal to put a roof over the equipment could be determined to be a permissible intensification of the non-conforming use rather than an impermissible expansion because the area was already devoted to equipment storage. I, I suspect, however, that this residentially zoned portion of the property where these new structures are located was vacant land not used for storage of equipment related to the nearby commercial use since prior to zoning. If that is true, so the buildings are illegal rather than being part of an existing non-conforming use of that area. In that case, there's nothing in section 10F that would prohibit the use variance unless this use is authorized by a special permit in the zone. Whether it qualifies for such a variance is an entirely different matter." End quote. So the applicant has now submitted this application. Um, September 2nd, 2021, uh, which makes the receipt date September 27th today. That is um, according to, to the state statutes, uh, 31 days after submission or the next scheduled meeting date, whichever is sooner shall be deemed um, the uh, application receipt date. So the open hearing deadline therefore is um, December 1st, 2021, which is six to five days after receipt of the application. So uh, in summary, um, 
the application is in order for the ZBA to act, in, in my estimation. Um, since the ZBA uh, gave prior approval in 2014 for the expansion of a non-conforming building, however, um, this application, based on the attorney's perspective, is not an expansion of a non-conforming use, but rather a straightforward variance. So um, in, in conclusion, um, therefore, uh, my opinion is that the ZBA may take a decision on this application, not as an expansion of a non-conforming use or building, neither as a use variance as such, um, but in my opinion, in the sense that the accessory structure be allowed to be on the portion of the property that is in a residential zone. For the reason that an accessory structure should not be on a separate zone from a principal structure. So, because here we have um, the principal structure being in one zone and, and, and um, the accessory structure would be in another zone, not having a principal structure. Um, so the existing three bay garage remains a legal non-conforming building that has, re that has already been expanded, of course, through a variance in, in 2014. So staff has no objection to the variance being granted for these two additional buildings. Um, and, and the reason for this is that um, this is a commercial entity on a property that has this um, th this landlocked landlocked um, zone. I wouldn't say landlocked parcel, but a separate zone, <clears throat> which which there's no no practical use as such. Uh, there's already a building there that is being used as an accessory structure. But I I I um I would recommend that certain conditions um, be included if a variance is to be granted. And um, they are as follows. And number one, no vehicles or equipment other than snow removal or property maintenance equipment be allowed to be stored on the property. And number two, the buildings must be kept closed except for the accessing of files or maintenance related equipment. The gates to the residential portion of the property to be removed are must remain completely open during business hours. And four, no work must take place on the property. And um, there's um, attachments there, letter from the chief building official. ZB letter of approval, building permit application, building permit site plan, notice of violation dated October 15th, enforcement 2015, enforcement order dated November 25th, 2020, picture from Scott Smith, taken 11-25-2020, um, aerial photo 2012 of the site, and photos from Scott Smith exhibit um, H1, H2, H3, and H4. And that's my um, report there, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Charles. Um, why don't we then give the applicant a chance to walk us through, and I'm gonna just point out for the record, uh, the applicant has the uh, misfortune of having tried to uh, help me coach basketball several seasons ago. So we, uh, we, we do know each other a little bit here. Um, yeah. So John, if you would just give us your name and address for the record and then walk us through your take on the application. Sure. John Carbone. Uh, my residence is 184 Highland street in Weathersfield, and the property in question is 8284 Bulkhead Hill road. So I, I thought I thought Charles did a good job, very good job providing background uh, for the application. Um, I just like to add a little more context with respects to the the two accessory buildings that were in question. There was an existing uh, 
prior to us putting up the uh, the standing seam carport structure, which just recently went up within the last eight, 10 months. I'm not sure what it was. I thought it was last year, last October, November-ish. Um, we had two tent structures and we were housing snow removal equipment in those two structures. And the town was aware that we were, that those were there. Uh, Fred Valenti was aware of that. And that was, that's probably been seven years. So there was a pickup truck with a plow attachment, as well as a uh, skid steer that was used also for snow removal. So I think it was a last winter, they were damaged in a storm. One of the structures, it was taken down and replaced by the standing seam uh, carport accessory structure uh, last October, November range. And, you know, as Charles indicated, you know, those structures are used for, you know, maintenance for the commercial property. It is a, it is a residential portion of the property that is somewhat landlocked. So it's been difficult to try to get, you know, uh, clear distinction on the use of the property. Um, one thing that I that I wanted to comment on, or actually two things that I wanted to comment on, were when we when there was approval on the structures back in I'm going to say 2004, 2003, 2004, when we built the accessory structures, when we built the commercial building. Uh, we could not park any vehicles inside those structures. They were solely to facilitate the building for file storage and for maintenance equipment and, you know, Christmas decorations, things of that nature, anything business related with managing the properties. Um, we did, in fact, expand that space. And as the um, the tenant based improved, you know, there was a, a larger need for storage and things of that nature. But with respects to the, the maintenance equipment, we can never park vehicles inside those structures. The temporary structures or accessory structures that we had there, we, you know, they weren't permanent structures per se, but they, you know, they last as long as they last. If you get eight, 10 years out of them, that's pretty much what you get out of those structures. And we were using it because it's difficult to maintain and do snow, you know, snow removal in the event there's, you know, stormy conditions. So these structures are very important to that aspect of managing the property. Um, one thing that I know Charles mentioned a couple stipulations. I, I do have one concern with the first one, um, no parking in that area. That property was originally approved for overflow parking for the commercial building. So what it would be is it was an overflow parking for commercial properties during business hours. So I, I would, you know, really, you know, request that that is still considered appropriate. Um, we're fine with no overnight parking or anything like that, but um, overflow parking during business hours, there's, you know, several professional business offices there. They do have a lot of patience and things of that nature. So there was a lot of traffic. So that was used for, um, tenant parking, we, we put maybe four or five, six cars back there if, if things started getting very tight. So that's one consideration that I wanted to uh, just note. The other conditions we have no problem with. Um, I do have, like I said, I do have a picture. I, you know, if, if Charles authorized me to share it, I could give you a little better indication. You know, it's a commercial parking lot, essentially in the back of the structure on 82 Wilkin Hill Road. And in the far right, uh, southeast corner, that's where the parcel, the outcropping is, as you could see on the application on the, the site plan. And it, you know, it's a significant portion of property and it, and it makes total sense to, to utilize it to the best of your ability, especially if it could enhance the, uh, the operation of the commercial building. So, um, you know, if you'd like to see pictures, I do have a couple, I just don't know how to link them. If anyone has any other questions, I'm sure you know, more than willing to uh, respond or answer any questions that you may have. All right, Charles, is that something that you can accommodate if he was going to try to share through Zoom here? Yes. Um, I think you have to authorize it when he makes the... You, you, you could try, and then when that comes up, I will... Um, so it says host must disable participant screen. So who's, are you the host? 
hosting. I'm the host. Um, so, so what do you want me to do now? It says that when I click on share screen, it says the host must disable participant screen sharing. So is there a, could you hit your must screen? Then and it, I can't. If I enable. enable your, oh, okay. Host. Sorry, enable your screen sharing. When I, when I do see that um, indicator, I will click on it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, okay, probably coming up now. <clears throat> while we're uh, doing that why don't we do a uh, we'll do our first round robin here for commissioners i'm just going to uh, call off as i see you on screen so dan any initial questions for the applicant or for charles yeah i have um can you hear me yes we got you in the application, there were many photos that were submitted. Can you explain what those photos are? Maybe it's for Charles. I see individuals loading the truck or. Okay, that um, exhibit, I think that's H3 or H4, um, that final exhibit. exhibit. That, that was sent by an adjoining property owner who on numerous occasions have complained that there's a, um, a contractor's yard being operated out of the property. And he has sent pictures. Um, so, so that pictures are more recent picture um, that, um, that shows some kind of, a, as a matter of fact, it was a video um, but because of the format in which the video was sent, I, I, I think I stored the video, but it was not stored, but I was able to get a picture of it. And that's some kind of a, a unloading, unloading or offloading of um, material um, that was taking place there. Um, the applicant has registered to speak in the public hearing section. Um, he called again today to tell me that this morning he saw activities going on on the property and that there are previous activities. I myself have noted activities on the property and that's why if you um, note in my, uh, in my cease and desist order, it not only refers to the, to the two legal buildings, but to cease and desist from operating um, any other kind of business like a contractor's yard on the property. All right, Dan, any other questions at the moment? Uh, not at this time, but maybe in, the, in, in a few minutes, I'll have some more. Okay, uh, let's check in with Paul. Any questions at this time for the applicant or for Charles? We're not right now. Okay, uh, Rita Ann, you're next on my screen. Any questions? You're still muted, Rita. Can you please unmute yourself? Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'd like to ask um, a question of Mr. Carbono. So PowerPoint Energy is one of your tenants? Correct. And where do they keep their equipment? Where do they keep their equipment? They're a consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And they do have service vehicles. They do not keep them on site. So... Um, there was one of, the, one of the photos that was submitted said that there was a PowerPoint energy sign on the truck that was in the photo. And so I was just wondering, and it looked like people were loading from one of your bays into that truck. Mm -hmm. So to me, that would indicate that this is perhaps the, what Charles and this neighbor are complaining about this is being used as a contractor's yard and it's more than just the structures that are the problem it's the use of that area now i went over and looked <clears throat> mm -hmm. yesterday okay. you know through the gate and there were vehicles parked there yesterday that were not there today so obviously they loaded up that trailer because the trailer was gone they mm -hmm. loaded up that trailer 
onto the truck perhaps, I don't know, and move things in and out. So I'm thinking that if, if I was gonna approve this application that I'd be looking for you to be storing you know, plows and things that you would use on the property to maintain your property there and not to be using it as a contractor's yards for one of your tenants. So I, I'm just a little confused, I guess, so about PowerPoint energy and their use of that area. Uh, they, PowerPoint does do the maintenance in the building. So in those garages currently, they handle, they do maintenance as part of the arrangement they have in there. So they do use the equipment there for building maintenance. So are they running a contractor's job and taking in large deliveries and things like that out of that space? Absolutely not. I mean, there is quite a bit of activity. I mean, we have throughout the day, UPS, FedEx, office supply, water delivery service. So there is activity like any other commercial building, but there's no specific deliveries coming in the back of that building, you know, in the back of that property per se. But they, yeah, I'm, they, I'm more they have access to the garages. They, they do keep things in the garages, but are they using it as a contractor's lot? Absolutely not. Well, what's being the huge, big trailer that's in one of the photos then parked to, by the side of the, uh, one of the temporary structures. Yeah. What's being loaded on that? Where was it today then? It wasn't there. So they must've loaded things on it somewhere they do they do leave that trailer in that yard back there so on the side of the two structures there's quite a bit of space there's probably 70 feet of space so they do leave that yeah, trailer no, either that. inside that lot or in the parking lot well okay um there's somebody else can ask questions because there's photos there and that that trailer was loaded with something and gone so i just wondered okay that's fair that's a fair question all right, thank you, Rita. Uh, Sandra, any initial questions? I was confused on the stipulations. And we're talking about the gates. Where are the gates? Are those the ones in the back of the property that I, I saw? Yes, there's two gates that open in to, the, uh, to where the structures are. Okay, so those will have to be- During business hours. Open? During business hours, Charles suggested that they stay open, which is fine, which wouldn't and be a problem. No work must take place on the property. What does that mean? Construction of any type. Okay. Uh, um, in, in, excuse me. Um, in, in answer to your question, uh, John, uh, <clears throat> as I understand it, the approval that was granted for the expansion of the non-conforming use in 2014 was that it was solely for the storage of files and um, other you know, business files and documents relate, that were overflowed. So for instance, in, in most businesses, they have files with documents and then as, as they get become outdated, there's what they, like an archive there stored there, and then they use the more day-to-day -day relevant files. So that is the purpose of that building there that is shaded in red and green. There are three bays, so to speak, and they're referred to as garage, but they're not being used as garage. They're strict, they're in the strict sense, they're storage sheds. And so so no work, my understanding is that no work, no form of um, work is supposed to be taking place there, whether for, um, you know, maintenance or whatever, no. Okay. All right, and uh, I'm gonna apologize. Uh, I believe Charles, we have another, a new commissioner on tonight who I have not met. Is that Joan? Yes, um, by the way, Mr. Chairman, and um, Jo Joan is our, our new commissioner, um, just starting out today. So, um, oh, welcome to the fun! <laughs> welcome to the Thank zoning you. board of appeals. And I uh, wanted to give wanted to give you a chance if you have any initial questions for either the applicant or Charles. Yeah, I don't have any questions at this at this point. Maybe later on. Okay, and I see. I'm going to go back to Paul. Looks like uh, if I'm reading the hand correctly. 
You are absolutely correct. I um I just wanted to ask a follow up question in uh, in regards to Rita Ann's first question. Um, so Mr. Carbone, um, you mentioned that the equipment that's being stored there is for maintenance. And um, as Charles just pointed out, which was what I thought I read, was that those, uh, well, the garage is supposed to be used to store files and documents. Now, can you explain to me what kind of equipment is being stored on the property? Because it's also my understanding that what the equipment that's supposed to be stored there is supposed to be like snow plows or something or um, equipment right. that's for the... Um... Well, well sure. uh, that's, what, that's what, excuse me if I may just come in here, uh, Paul. What's before us today is for the, um, before you, is for the um, approval of that, those two new structures for the housing of, um, of uh, snow plows, you know, snow cleaning equipment that, that's not yet approved. So, so it, that should not even be taking place there. Presently. Okay, so then, uh, Mr. Carbone, what what are the equipments that are being stored there right now? <clears throat> stored under the uh, carport structure. In the, I, Charles, if you, it's requesting that you, um, the host has my screen disabled. So if you could, the host has my uh, share screen disabled. If you could. Enable my share. I could show you a quick picture, which would go a long way. So I think you have Enable to click, screen. Click, I, click your screen I, on the bottom. I am doing that. I'm going through, and I don't see an option to enable. Uh, enable screen sharing. No, I, I, I I'm unable to. I, I'm sorry, but. Um, I'm unable to, to, to allow your screen share simply because I don't see. Right, right, on, the, never, right on the bottom, there seems to be icons and mine says share screen. And when I click on it, it says the host has the participant screen disabled. So I don't know if there's something you could do on your end. Yeah, it, uh, is it worth just, uh, is it just a I, I could, hard I could copy talk. photo or is it on the computer? It's on the computer. It's, oh, a, it's okay. a picture that I have. I mean, I could give, you know, I can answer Mr. Brady's question, but I, I could walk you through it if we can't get the, the sharing going. Um, so in the two accessory structures that are there right now, Paul, there is a, uh, a skid steer. There is a two plow, a plow attachment and a snow thrower, as well as the pickup truck, which the accessory, the, the snow plow would, would mount onto. And um, as I indicated that, you know, there were two tent structures there prior and now the, the carport structure that was just erected last October, November is, um, is what we're, we're talking about here today uh, with regards to the application. All right, and can I pick up Charles with a, a question off of that? So the, just the, parking of those vehicles and storing of those vehicles on that portion of the lot. Um, is there an issue there as well, or is the issue strictly with the structures and the construction of the structure? So in other words, is he okay storing maintenance vehicles in that section, on that section of the property? No, the answer is no. Okay, so that's at issue as well. But there was, um, and Charles, did you have any comment? Uh, I believe, um, Mr. Carbone, if I heard you correctly, you said it, that's been something that's happened for about the last seven years or so? No, no. when we, um, that space was approved for overflow parking in 2004. When we, uh, it's residential, it's a residential property. Mm -hmm. So that, that, parcel of land back there was approved for overflow parking for the commercial building. So we always parked on that site. And like, as I indicated, it would be, you know, during business hours, the tenants, like there's physical therapy folks, there's chiropractic, there's attorneys, they would park their cars back there, their employees would a handful of them so that the clients could come in and out freely and there would be available parking spaces. Um, 
they wouldn't be parking there overnight or anything of that nature. It would just, in the event we were having parking issues, we'd open the gates and then the employees would be parking in there. And that happened several times throughout the years. So not, not lately with COVID, but it, I don't want to lose that as a, as a condition because hopefully it comes back. I, you know? I, I'm unaware of that. Um, I, I, I would have to go and, um, and check the, the records. I'm not saying that it's not so. All I'm saying it's is probably 2003, 2004, I Charles. Am unaware. Um, but, and I think we might be saying two different, sorry, I think we might be saying two different things because I think there's the overflow parking consideration and then your first stipulation, Charles, as I read it again, was the storage specifically mm -hmm. of the maintenance vehicles. And it would be limited to, so storage would be limited only to vehicles that were tied to the maintenance. Right, but, 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 but if, if there was an approval for, um, for, for overflow parking from the office building, on this property, then we could not stipulate that we could only park, that he could only park snowplow and equipment. Mm -hmm. the, the board would just simply be giving him the, the, the okay to to, 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 to part them there not, not, and, not, and just um, exclude the word only. However, if, 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 the, if the applicant continue to, 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 to put things into this area that is supposed to be, be um, allowed for overflow parking, then I don't see how many spaces you will have there to accommodate that overflow parking. I, I don't know. You could get, we were getting six cars, Charles. You, can so you get six the, cars in there now? Yeah, to the left of the carport <laughs> structure, you could probably get three to four cars and then okay. straight straight in against that um, easterly fence, side fence, you could get another two to four if you double stack them. So, so you could get six cars back there pretty easily. Okay. You know, comfortably. And... I think somewhat related to that. Can we just review again what the size, the approximate size is of the structures that we're talking about? Charles, you have the application. I don't have that in front of me. It's it's on the um, the print. The site you mean plan, you mean you these it. two these two um, structures in question? These two new structures? Yes, please. We we have um, the the rectangular shaped one is um, what is it? 12 by 40, which would give us a square footage of 480. And the, the um, square one is 24 by 24, which um, amounts to 576 square feet. So total 576 plus 480 would give us 1056. So that's a gross um, area of 1056 square feet there. All right, and under, um, Charles, if we can just review for a second, under normal, just straight residential single family zoning, would those structures require anything additional uh, beyond normal building permit or is there other review that would have to happen for structures of that size? Uh, so so um, for garages, garages, are subject to a limitation of 850 square feet in total. So, and and um, so, so a garage that's gonna be in, in construction that's over 850 square feet, mm -hmm. normally would have to get the approval um, like a conditionally special permit from the Planning and Zoning Commission. But, but Charles, the, the carport structure is what, 24 by 24, you said? Mm -hmm. So that that's, 500, that's 576 square feet. Yeah. 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 So it's below the 800 that you were referring no. to. Yeah. I, said, I said in total. total oh, combined, you're saying combined? Combined. combined. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why don't we um, take a minute here? I believe we had uh, at least one resident on the line who wanted to speak to this application. So 
Uh, Charles, can you let me know if there is, in fact, someone here who wishes to um, express opinion? Could you could you give me one minute, please? Okay. Hmm. All right. While we're waiting, um, I had a. I'll throw another question out. So hmm. you've had some. It sounds like at least for some period of time, you've had these maintenance vehicles there. Where does the servicing happen for these vehicles? Like so if they off. need repair, where, they where go, is they that go off site. That They go off site. They go okay. off site. Bobcat in East Starford and then Ford Moranti uh, Ford there in Glastonbury for the, uh, the F-350. But yes, they were, there were two accessory structures and they were, you know, essentially they're tents, the carport tents. Um, so they're, they're somewhat of a, a temporary structure. And, you know, as I indicated, you know, a couple of years ago, one of them was damaged in a storm. There was a large branch that came down on one of them, tore it, and then the structure was never sound after that. And we just did the replacement last October um, to the carport structure. And it's, uh, it's actually been pretty good, like as far as uh, just ease of maintenance, ease of access, and, you know, during in climate weather. It's been a big difference. And, and it's, qu it's quite a big space. I, I was going to ask Charles what the total square footage is. I mean, that's a large property back there. It's, you know, when you're accommodating. Charles, if you have that A2 survey, what, what is the space back there that we're talking about, the residential portion of the property? What's the, there's sidelines, the dimensions, just for context? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't have, um... that's, you know, there's one, there's one one reference in a document I'm, I'm looking at is this would this be the right measurement 102 by 175 yes yes okay okay so that's a calculation here is 17,850 yeah so it's a big property you know it's a, it's a lot of quite a so, property back there so um excuse me mr mr chairman so you yes. would like to bring in um the public speaker at this yes. point, okay, let me get him on the line. I am on the call if you can hear me. Oh, wait, there you are. Okay, so this is just one of the um, public speakers. So yeah, that's fine, you can go ahead. I can always get the other. Can you can hear you. and see me? Yes, we can, we can hear you, we can see you. If you would, just uh, give us your name and address okay. for the record and then let us know what you'd like us to know about the application. Uh, sure. My name is Adam Guster, spelled A-D-E-M-G-U-S-T-E-R, Adam Guster. My address is 31 Livingston Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut. All right. Thank you very much. And you wanted to share some thoughts on the application? Yes, indeed. Uh, I actually live, uh, probably I am one of the most impacted uh, residents in the area by this property. And the reason I say this, because there is, a, if you see any of the pictures within the application itself, um, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, your last name. Did I forget your last name already? Uh, you Charles? Charles Morrison. Morrison. Charles Morrison. Uh, Mr. Morrison, the document that you sent me, um, one one piece of property that's uh, dividing my backyard and this uh, this property in question uh, about building, there's only a tiny strip, maybe it's like two three feet uh, apart, separating uh, the property my property and this property in question. So I can hear and see almost everything what's going on on that uh, in this uh, this property. The only difference is I actually up to this point have not been uh, documenting anything until I got the notif notification letter um, that there's gonna be a public hearing. I'm like, oh my God, why didn't I think about this before? Uh, because when I purchased uh, my house in December of 2020, I actually wanted to know what's going on in the area before I buy my property. So I looked up uh, the address what businesses are on that property. So I saw dental, carbone, chiropractor. I'm like, hey, these are just the businesses that will not have any 
heavy duty activity in the back uh, in the back of that building. So that gave me a little bit of confidence. I'm like, you know, I'll just go proceed and buy the property, uh, 31 Livingston Street. Uh, but little did I know that after some time, there's going to be actually a lot of noise coming from this uh, piece of strip of parcel or, or parcel that in question uh, that started making me doubt, did I make a right decision of buying the property, uh, 31 Livingston Street? Um, there was definitely a lot of noise, uh, like over the past month or so or two months. Uh, there was heavy activity as uh, building some kind of uh, structure over there. So there, all day long, there would be drilling, hammering, um, saws, all kinds of the cutting the metal materials. I don't know what they were building. I wasn't really trying to make a lot of observation. I thought that was always there. That was always happening. And I just had, uh, happened not to know about it until I purchased the property. But now, being part of this uh, town hall public hearing, I'm actually glad to know more about this, um, about what's going on. And, I'm, and I still question, like, did I make a right decision to buy the property? But knowing that this is a residential piece of land mm -hmm. uh, gives me a little bit of comfort. Maybe some of the activities that are happening there, maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> I, I think I need a little bit of peace. My neighbor also needs a little bit of peace, who is uh, against the uh, any activity there. Um, I, I heard a number of things that were mentioned uh, about what's happening there. For example, if the business hours are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, I don't think this is the case. There's other times when the activities are going on. And let's say snow falls on Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> Are you going to wait until 7 a.m. on Monday to come in with a plow truck and remove the snow from that piece of property? Uh, I don't know. I, I wish they are going to wait until 7 a.m. on Monday to remove the snow. But I highly doubt they're going to come at Sunday or Sunday 3 a.m. and Monday 3 a.m. and they're going to come remove the snow and everybody's sleeping. Uh, I also heard comments about overflow parking or uh, permits from 2003. I would definitely love to see those documents. If it is just a storage uh, property for documents, I don't think that would be a problem at all if, if those are the original uh, the original intent for this property. That, that wouldn't be, I don't think it would make a lot of noise. I don't think uh, people carrying documents over there, storing them, no noise, no problem. Uh, overflowing parking, I would like to see permits if that's actually correct and true. If so, you know, I'll say, oh, okay, good. Uh, they have a permit for overflow parking. The town gave them. Uh, I just don't know whether that's uh, correct or not. Um, I'm, refer I'm gonna re reference now to application itself on page, page four. It says ZBA application addendum. Uh, the last sentence, it says, it is important to note that this area is very well maintained and enclosed by a seven foot privacy fence, which is aesthetically pleasing to all of the neighboring properties. <laughs> uh, I think I'm the best one to actually say that it is not pleasing to see. I have pictures on my computer that I can share. And if it was possible for you to allow me to share those pictures, I could, because I took it. Uh, the picture that's in the application is actually from a very nice angle. And it looks, it looks kind of cool. Actually, you can see my house in those uh, papers in the application itself. Uh, however, the picture that I take from a different angle, it is not pleasing at all. It is actually see-through. Uh, you can see a pickup truck with, a, uh, with uh, some kind of equipment loaded on, a, uh, what do you call the dolly thing that you load stuff on? Palme. What is it? A palme. Um, that you attach to, to a trailer, to, like a little mini trolley. What is it called? I, I can't remember the name. I'm sorry, but if there's a a long, a big, a, lots of equipment uh, passed through that property. That in one of the pictures you can actually see it. So I, I wish I could share it. Would it be possible to share either, or should I email it maybe for consideration before approving any of this? 
Yeah, unfortunately, we uh, we were trying. We were not able to share uh, over Zoom. So if you want to email that to uh, Charles, if you have. Yeah, uh, I definitely would love to, to send those. Um, a few other things. I, um, I I would like to ask every, every one of you, if you were to buy this house and then you realize actually there's a lot of noise coming that you did not expect or that actually shouldn't be happening because it's a, it's considered a residential area, but used for business purposes. Um, I don't know how residential parcel was turned into a commercial use. Uh, for me, it is commercial. And I think it's gonna drive the value of my house if uh, this project uh, proceeds. It will drive the value of the property of my neighbor, um, who also keeps uh, complaining about that uh, property. Um, so I don't know how what kind of impact it's going to have on me. Plus, uh, I wish I can actually put a fence that is eight feet tall, and I would have to get a permit from the town for eight foot fence because you can actually see everything what's going on over there. If I build it only six feet, it may not be enough, and I don't I don't, I don't think I need a permit for six foot. But if I was going to add a, a little bit higher fence to block off the view to this property where there's just too much activity, I think I need to get a special permit from the town. So will the town, if they approve this petition, will they consider giving me a permit to build a taller structure so I can block off the view and the noise and the sound uh, from, uh, from this property? Or will this property owner consider uh, financing some, some of it uh, because there is no need for me. If there's not noise, if there's no commotion over there, there's no construction going on, I don't need to build a fence. But if there is noise, if there is commotion, there is construction, there is activity all day long, uh, many days, then should they sponsor my or finance my, uh, my fence? I think we, uh, my, my ask here is maybe to allow additional time uh, before this is even considered approved. I'd like to know more about the overflow parking permit if uh, that's actually in the books. Uh, I'd like to see some pictures from Mr. Coron. I'd like to some, send some of my pictures so it can be actually put in the record. Uh, there is a different view <laughs> of the property. Uh, I understand that when we are submitting an application, we are supposed to put the best language in it. So hopefully it has a easy case of winning, uh, but it's, it's not ac accurately represented in the application from, this is from my perspective. Um, All right, El, thank you uh, for joining and for sharing the perspective. I have one question and then I'll see if anybody else has a question for you. So um, a, a good portion of what uh, we heard from you is in relation to sort of a what seemed to be a constant level of activity in that portion. Um, the structures themselves and the storage of maintenance vehicles for the property. I, I just I, I want to make sure that um, that we're clearly hearing your view. I, is your view of that? also a negative or is it mainly your opposition to the um the level of activity that you've observed uh, i like how you phrase your questions i uh, i just wonder the, the the way you phrase your questions uh, makes me wonder why you're phrasing them in, in a way that's oh, I... favorable to mr carone are you is it the partnership between you and Mr. Caron that influences the, the way you phrase it. I actually have been paying attention how you phrase your questions and okay. you navigating me is almost a little bit biased, but it is there. It's both. It's the activity that's going on now uh, right there, but it's also what, what they're seeking to build on that property, which is additional structure so they can do more things than what they already do or to make illegal <laughs> uh, what they're doing illegally right now. Uh, so think of a residential piece of property that is right on my three feet away from me, bringing in 
commercial equipment and running it legally. I cannot bring any piece of uh, commercial equipment and running it in my backyard all day long. If I get a permit for that, I will be able to run it and I can't say anything about it. And I think there is a case here for that where on a residential piece of property, I'm getting a permit that I can legally operate uh, commercial equipment and I can't do it. Uh, my neighbors can't do anything about it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your opinion and your, and your feedback. Um, Charles, did we have anyone else who was wanting to speak to the application? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have Scott Smith from 13 Lexington Street. And I will, he's standing by to join us and um, I'll attempt to have him on this very moment. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Um, this is Charles Morrison with the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. How are you? It has come around to that time of public speaking, which um, as you um, suggested, we would like to have you on to, to hear um, from you. So um, I'm gonna put you on speakerphone and you will be speaking directly into a microphone. The commissioners will hear you and everyone will hear your comments, all right? Okay. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Skoll, could you um, state your name and address for the records, please? Hi, this is Scott Smith, 13 Lexington Street. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Okay, um, I think the Zoning Board of Appeals should turn down this variance this applicant has a history of putting structures up at this property and putting them up first and then looking to get a variance afterwards. You approved the variance in 2014 when he added a third bay onto the existing two bays that he had, and that was put up he said by a construction company while he was away on vacation. And then, you know, suddenly he had a third bay. So he's put these two structures up previous to any kind of permit. And now he expects you guys to approve it or to give the variance. So, like I say, I don't think you should. I think you should deny it. But more importantly, Mr. Carbone is running a business from this uh, back property, which is zoned residential. I gave the zoning enforcement officer a video that I took off site on August 5th of a bobcat loading up a pickup truck and a trailer with materials that were going off site. This isn't just storage for the the tenants of 82 Wilkin Hill Road. PowerPoint Energy LLC is registered to John Carbone, and it's my opinion that he's running his construction business out of that back property. I observed him many times, not him, but his company, uh, loading up, using the Bobcat, using the pickup truck, the trailer, the equipment that's in there, I was there this morning at about 20 of eight and they were loading up. So not only uh, is it not proper that he has these two buildings there, but you know he's, he's running a business out of there. He's running a commercial business, in my opinion, out of a residential zone. So again, I don't think this should, uh, this should pass. And uh, I guess that's, uh, that's about it. I thank you for your uh, my chance to uh, speak my mind. All right, thank you for joining us. Uh, what I'd like to do while we have both of the speakers is just uh, if any of the commissioners wish to ask questions of either mm -hmm. of the residents who have spoken. Okay. 
All right, I don't see any tickers on that. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll give the applicant a chance to address some of the concerns that were raised by the two residents. Yeah. Oh, before, <clears throat> before you go, um, if I may just butt in here, Mr. Chairman. So are you yes. through, Mr. Mr. Scott? Can we cut you off now? Or would well, you... I just want, will they have would... access to the video that I took and the pictures that I, I... I did send them the picture. I did send them the picture. It was difficult to get the video um, saved and to, to play it for them, but I did send them a photograph and a description of what I saw on the video. So um, if you would like to um, stay on with your um, permission, Mr. Chairman, can he, can he stay and um, be a part of the meeting? Or do you want oh, to Oh yeah, that's, that's totally fine. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear what, what the applicant has to say. Okay. So, um, so Mr. Chairman, I have a third. Um, oh, okay. Speak him. Only that he sent a letter. He probably didn't want to speak in person. Or he um, was not able to, so he sent me this letter. And it says, Dear sirs, my name is Charles A. Vicino. I reside with my wife, Valerie, at 19 Livingston Street. Our backyard borders most of the property that is in question. I have lived at this address practically my whole life, having grown up here with my parents and uh, brother. Uh, my wife and I purchased our house in 1984 from my father, Charles F. By Sino. We raised our three, our three children here, and they are all successful in raising our eight grandchildren. I strongly disapprove of Southside Partners LLC to seek a variance to allow two additional accessory structures on a residential portion of a split zone parcel. These structures are already up in violation of zoning laws. How was this allowed to happen? In the application, the structures are pictured as being new. And this is not accurate. The tent-like structure has been there at least five to 10 years. The metal carport was installed last year before any permit. These structures are on property that is on residential. Also, the equipment Mr. Carbone has stored there and in the garages is not used solely for business at 82 Walcott Road, which is what was stipulated in the original approval. Many early mornings, I see and hear Mr. Carbone's work, crew leaving the premises in trucks. Where are they going? Six months out of the year, I get a good look at the building garages, equipment and structures when all the tree leaves fall. Also, I don't consider the seven foot privacy fencing aesthetically pleasing to all the neighborhood properties. These garages, structures, and Mr. Cabon's businesses never should have been allowed to be permitted and approved by the ZBA 16 years ago. It permanently changed the neighborhood I grew up in and not for the better. Charles A. Vicino, 19 Livingston Street. That's it, Mr. Chairman. All right, and that concludes the feedback that we needed to enter in. Charles? Yes. Um, okay. No, I, I, I erred there, Mr. Chairman. No, as a matter of fact, I received another, um, I received an email uh, this afternoon, and that email came from, uh, I don't have a name, but um, Mr. Mr. Um, Smith, are you there? Yes, I'm still um, Hold on, let me see if I can get this um, while still having you on the phone. Let me see if I can still get uh, this email here. Yes, I can. Um, it comes from 
an email address that says elevator musician. Um, he, and unfortunately he didn't sign the name to it. Um, it's probably Ed Sadurkis. It could be Ed Sadurkis, Mr. Chairman, and I don't have an address for him. But it says, and, and I, I, I quote, it reads as follows. Um, comments on application 6251-20. And it says, after conversation with several neighbors here, here are some comments regarding this application. Is this an appeal on a structure that they started construction on and they had to stop because of complaints? And then it says, are these structures already in place? Are they asking for an appeal on something that has already been constructed? Is this the same situation as what they did in 2014? They have in the past used the space as a yard with trucks coming in and out. They are surrounded by neighbors who have had to put up with trucks entering and exiting the rear area with reverse gear sounds in addition to the tail lights shining brightly. All right, should I say in addition to the tall lights shining brightly. And that came from Ed Sodorakis. That's it, Mr. Chairman. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Um, all right, I'd, I'll go back to the applicant for any opportunity you would like to respond to what you heard. Uh, yes, I would. I, I'd like to respond to the first uh, person providing testimony. I believe it was Adam Guster. I don't know if he's still on the line. Yeah, still here. Yeah, so Adam, you made a couple comments that um, I wanted to respond to with respects to the privacy fence. It's a seven, seven foot privacy fence. It's essentially a chain link fence with privacy slats in it. And um, it is set at an elevation that is three feet higher than the actual parking pavement on the property that we're, that's in question. So essentially that's 10 feet above your sight line. So, uh, and it surrounds the whole property behind the existing structures and to the east and to the north. And then the gate is facing the Western side of the property which is the main entrance of the building. And with respects to the initial stipulation, it was not a permit, it was a stipulated use for that back property and it was overflow parking. And I'm sure Charles could look that up and that was 2003 or 2004, no permits necessary to park on a residential piece of property. The property that's adjacent to my property on the easterly side is a residential property where I have arborvitaes on the back of my commercial property and it is being used for parking. There's boats, trailers, motorhomes, a box truck, and a dumpster. And that's been there for five years since I'm here. So while we're talking about all the properties surrounding and what my property means to the neighborhood, I think it's a, it's a great time to discuss that. So with respects to the privacy fence, it's a seven foot fence with a three foot drop before it hits the pavement where the two accessory structures have existed for seven, eight years now. I think someone made the comment that they were there. Um, with respects to all the loud noise, there hasn't been any construction on that site since last October, November, when the structure was erected. It's not a construction site. And if it's approved for overflow parking, how am I doing construction back there with overflow parking in the, in the site? That gate is typically closed 90% of the time. It may open once or twice a day, but the gate is closed. There's no construction taking place there. The other caller, Mr. Scott, Mr. Smith made a comment. 
PowerPoint energy comes to the job, to, to the office every day in vehicles, their own vehicles, and then they drive to wherever there is service. They don't work out of there. They don't store things there. And they do not park their vehicles there for extended periods of time. It's, it's just, it doesn't happen. So irregardless, if this place, if we took this out of the equation, PowerPoint Energy is a tenant of 82 Walking Hill Road. They have offices there. They have a service division that comes to the office daily and comes back at the end of the day, puts in the reports and they leave. So irregardless of that property being there or not, or them using it or not, there's still a whole parking lot with 70 plus parking spaces. So it doesn't have an impact who the tenant is that's in the building. So, and the tenants are allowed to use those accessory buildings. All three accessory buildings are used by the tenants. There's file storage in the middle bay and the two exterior ones are for, they store their Christmas decorations. They store the, the far one on the right on the easterly side of the fence there was all sanding and salting equipment and some of the attachments were stored in there. The first one was lawn care equipment and other related fit out equipment, such as doors and things of that nature. So it's all to service the building and we're welcome, I'm welcoming any of you to come down and take a look and see what's going on in there. There's no construction. And I think that would really alleviate a lot of these questions that are being uh, raised here because clearly there's, uh, there's something else going on. So, um, you know, I, I feel, I feel with respect, you know, I, I really appreciate people giving input and, you know, being concerned about what's happening in the properties, because I stand as a property owner and I have several issues with adjacent properties, which Mr. Morrison is, is aware of. And I mean, we have public health issues with properties adjacent to ours, and we're struggling to get them addressed. And I think that is something that, uh, you know, I'm going to be putting a, a tremendous amount of effort forward to make certain that that is addressed. And Charles, you know, the property in question that I am talking about. Yeah. Um, it. Mr. Chairman, I, I don't. Well, that's not a, it's I not a. It's not a relevant, it's not a relevant. Right. Right. I don't right. want yeah, to I discuss agree. that or even make a comment yeah. about that. Um, Would you allow okay. a response to one at least comment? Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, how do I say? Uh, as far as the noise, I know you can tell me that there is no noise, but I lived there since December. Actually, I moved on. It, I moved in on February first because I did renovation for one month. So, Adam, are you right? Are you? I can tell you that I live there and I hear the noise. If you try to convince me that there is no construction, there is no noise. And then that's a that's a sign for me uh, that you're not really telling me <laughs> uh, well, what you're presenting is not is not valid to me. And I believe that what I uh, taking this stance is the right stance saying I vote against it. And you, you also want to be aware as a businessman, you enter into a risky business, you're <laughs> acquiring a residential piece of property that may or may not be approved. If you get on the ter on the good terms of the neighbors and you show them uh, respect and honesty and you do due diligence to satisfy their concerns, they'll they're gonna be on your good side and they're gonna perhaps say you know what we're gonna side with you we're gonna uh, vote, approve it for you but otherwise I don't think this is the time uh, for approval so my vote is against it. Can I speak again, Mr. Scott Smith? Yes, please go ahead. <clears throat> I hear that beeping from the Bobcat often, not every day, but quite often. And I don't think I should have to listen to the beeping of a Bobcat. I'm only about 150, 200 feet away from the property line. At 7.30 in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee, I hear it, I drive up there, I look at the property and you're loading up a pickup truck or you're loading up a trailer with building materials. You know, just like Mr. Gustafson just said, I don't think you're being honest with the, with the neighbors. I see it with my own eyes. I hear it with my own ears. The beeping of a bobcat isn't something I'm imagining. I hear it quite often. And just like today, I went up there and a truck was getting loaded up 
to go to a job more than likely, in my opinion. So when you say there's no construction going on there, you're diverting the attention away from that. I'm not saying there's construction going on there, but you're taking materials in and out of there going to jobs. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've heard it with my own ears. I've made a video of it and gave it to the zoning enforcement officer. The board members can look at it and hear it. And you don't have to say that, you know, you're not doing anything there or trying to divert that there's a, a property near there that needs paint on the house or whatever. Thank you. Yeah, could right. I respond to, to Scott? Yeah, let, uh, let's do that. And then I want to go back around to each of the commissioners for any questions. Okay. Yeah, Scott, my re my first reply was to Adam claiming that there was construction activity all day long. There was no construction activity on that site. I didn't um, say that. No, Scott, Scott said that. I mean, Adam said that. So you're you're referring to there are, and I'm, I'm admitting to, there are vehicles. PowerPoint Energy comes in, their vehicles come in every morning, whether or not they're loading material, I think that's a rarity. Um, but they come to the office building every day, they get their work orders and the service division, they, they leave and they do what they do. Um, well, it's a car you're running that you're running a commercial business out of a residential area. No, and it's a commercial, it's a area. commercial, it's a commercial building, Scott. It's a commercial no, it's building. It's, it's, it's a commercial building. That's not where you're running the business from. You're running the business from the, resi the residential area. That's not accurate. They have offices. They have offices on the second floor of 82 Walkett Hill Road. That's, That's where, where the office is at. coming from. The noise is coming from the residential area. I have ears. I have eyes. Uh, if, all right, right, if, 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 we're we're if, 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 yeah, it, and thank you. If I may, um, it's clear that we're, we're going to yeah, have disagreement. We're not going to resolve uh, that aspect of it. So what I'd like to do, if we could, is go back around to each of the commissioners for any questions that you may have for either. I'd like the commissioners to see that video that I made, though. I think that would answer a lot of questions. And Charles, you'll have to speak to our ability to do that. I don't know if you've got that capability. Let me, While you... let me refer you to... Uh... And Charles, while you're looking, I'm going to open it up. Um, Dan, did you have any questions that yes. you wanted to ask? I, I did. Um, it seems to be there's a lot of comments regarding the Bobcat. What is the Bobcat being used for during 7.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning or even 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Because I heard earlier that the Bobcat is used, I thought, solely for snow removal. But it seems like you're using it for other purposes as well. Is that a true uh, I, statement? I, I would say it's being it's being used primarily for the maintenance of the uh, the grounds and the facility. For primarily. example, do you have for example, uh, are you moving shrubs around? Or are you no, 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 no. I mean, it occasionally would be used to pull something off a pallet or something of that nature as well. If there's a delivery or, or something of that sort. A delivery of what? Because I heard that the garages are for file cabinets and correct or doors for the building of the property. What would be delivered that would be on a pallet for the maintenance of the property? Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be for the maintenance of the property. So if very rarely, I'm going to say 90 percent of that Bobcat is used for the maintenance of that facility. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman. May I just um, make it clear to the commissioners that um, as far as the storage of the bob, as far as the bobcat goes, there's no there's no approval for the bobcat to be operating on the property. So part of this variance application today is for these two new structures to be approved to house a plow truck, snow removal equipment, such as a bobcat. So. So today, yesterday, a week ago, two weeks ago, the Bobcat is not supposed to be even doing, moving around on the property. If anything, if I was told that the Bobcat was parked on the property, stationary, not being moved, then that would kind of be a, a different kettle of fish. But the Bobcat is in operation. There's no approval for the Bobcat to be on the property. That, that's, okay. that's what I have, Mr. Chairman. 
All right. Thank you, Charles. Dan, did we cover your questions? Uh, okay. I just have a question for Charles. Are you saying the Bobcat, we should not take that into consideration for our decision or the Bobcat should be well, stationary? Well, the Bobcat really has no place on the property right now. That's all I'm, that's what I'm saying. Okay. You know, um, if, it, if it's there, it's there, it's there illegally. If it's there moving up and down, unloading things, offloading things, that shouldn't be. Okay. Because, and I, I just want to get back to the main point of the of the um, approval for the building. The approvals on the structures for the property. On the structures, the, the three bays is for the storage of files and documents. If you look at exhibit, E4, there's one bay open with um, things which does not appear to be filed. If you look at exhibit E3, you can see the PowerPoint energy vehicle and men stooping, men moving around things. There's a long um, extension cord. If you look at exhibit E1, you could see clearly into the first bay and you could take a look for yourselves and see whether that that appears to be um, files and documents. If you look at exhibit H3, you could clearly see, um, I think that's, that's the same Bobcat. There's a pickup truck. There's another trailer with uh, pallets, um, some container looking wooden structures with what kind of materials is inside in them? I don't know. In, in the back of the truck, you could see, you could see activities. You could see activities which, which, which more or less speaks to um, a, a contractor's yard operation. That's that's what it appears to be. All right, Dan, are you set? For the time being, yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm going to move to Rita Ann. Did you have any questions you wanted to convey? Um, I have a question for Charles then. So are you saying, Charles, that the cease and desist order that you gave Mr. Carbone has not been followed if, there, if that well, um, that has been used? Apparently not. Because, okay. Um, you know, he would have to explain to me before I take any further. Uh, he would have to satisfy me what, what this picture here, this video from Mr. Scott Smith represents. And um, there are some pictures that I took when I visited the property in, 20, in 2020, when I sent him a cease and desist I, it probably wasn't a cease and desist, but it was a notice of violation saying that right. okay. my observations um, tells me that this is what you're doing. If this is what you're doing, please desist from, from doing this kind of operation. And he told me no. Um, when I spoke to one of the workmen, they told me, he told me that um, he was making some kind of an electrical fixture for the office. Mm -hmm. which that's not a part of the, um, the the agreement for the variance that you could use it to make fix to, to do oh, work sorry. I'm again it's merely for the storage of files and documents if you're if you're there manufacturing um, electrical fix, fix, assembling ele electrical fixtures doing this doing that working in there you're not supposed to be in the yard working, doing any kind of work um, related to the property. So my, my idea though is that the property, is that the doors, the, the, the garage doors should be closed um, and it will be only open and used um, on the floor and, and exhibit, if you look at exhibit E1 on the floor, you could see, you can see what appears to be some kind of, um, I don't know if it's shavings. Or, you could see that it, it gives you the impression that there's some kind of work going on. Somewhere where you store files and documents will have a different appearance than this in my estimation. I guess part of my question is the application is for the structures. 
but it seems to me that part of the problem here is yes what's absolutely. going to be yes in those yes. structures and how are because, they going to be yeah used? the concern because is that notice yes. of violation was was for more than just the structures absolutely. and the neighbors are are concerned about what's going on within those structures yes so yes. I, I have i th think i'm taking that into account that, too but that, is the why, is that is why that is why because if this variance was was to be approved and um I would only expect to see the trucks being parked there, not moving stationary for the months that it doesn't snow, and it will be just there. And um, if it is proven that that they have a right to store to, to park overflow vehicles there, then so be it. The, 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 the gates would be open. The gate if overflow vehicles are being parked there, then the gate it would not be practical to have the gates closed right through the, right. the gates would have to be open yeah. so that these overflow vehicles can get it's not every time that they're going to move someone has to go and take a key and open the gate for them to come out and when they it should be it should remain open for the overflow vehicles and um and and people storing files is not an everyday thing to put away files and it's an archive, okay. Yeah. So, so that's something yeah. that you would that's something that you would do periodically, once a month or, or whatever. So my idea of this residential property is that it would be just there. You wouldn't see any kind of activity at all. I was right. wondering how that is why that is why I suggested that there would be a a condition if it is approved. If it is approved, there will be a condition that says the gates have to remain open between what six and okay. seven and nine, seven and six. All right, and Charles, I want to make sure we have a chance to get through some more of the questions because I think we can pick some of that up when we get into the uh, the, the meeting portion. Rita, go ahead. Go ahead. What's the height of the carport, Charles or Mr. Carbone? Do you have that? Mr. Carbone, what's the height? I'm going to estimate 10 feet to the to the ridge. Um, well, if the if the fencing, if the privacy fencing is three feet off and you said that would make it 10 feet, the top of that. I think it's a little higher. Is way off that, you know, the triangular part is above the yeah, privacy the, fencing. The so ridge. Now, so the fence is the fence is approximately six feet, but they leave it off the ground a little bit. And then there's about a three foot buffer to the uh, surface. So yeah. that would it would have to probably be I, I'm, I'm guessing I don't have the dimension in front of me. So just by 12 feet, probably. the picture that I, ha I have a picture right here that we can't view, but yeah, it's probably okay. it's probably a few feet higher than the, the top of the fence where it's you know, probably standing around nine feet, nine, 10, 11, 12, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty bit When I drove around, it's pretty visible over the privacy fence. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's 12 feet. It's still considerably lower than the existing structure, which is probably around 16 feet, the ridge of the, the, the adjacent structure. Okay. All right, uh, let's move to Sandra. Did you have any questions? No. All right, thank you. And and I'm sorry, is it Joan or Joanne? It's Joan. Joan, okay, thank Joan you. Did you have any questions? Not at this point. All right, and Mr. Brady, did you have any questions? I have one question for Mr. Carbone. Um, Carbone, um, did it never occur to you that you needed to seek uh, approval for the structures before erecting them? Um, I'm just curious as to what was the, um, why did you put the structures up before even consulting uh, I mean, they, the town? Mr. Brady, they were, like I said, they've been there probably seven, eight years. And I had several town officials out there prior. And they, you know, essentially they're, I'm going to use the term, I know Charles doesn't like it, but they're temp, they were temporary structures. So they're not meant to be there forever. They have a shelf life of probably 10 to 12 years. Um, the, the tent structure. So we didn't think it would be necessary. It was never raised that you'd need a permit or a variance to put something like that up. Um, so that, that's why there was no uh, approval taken prior. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if I may, um, my, my other question, um, based on conversations about the privacy fence and the description of the privacy fence, it may appear that maybe part of the fence that you're able to see through it or the neighbors are able to see through the fence. Is that so? It's, it's a chain link fence with privacy slats. So if you go on an angle, I mean, you've seen them on like uh, ball fields and things like that. So if you catch an angle, you could kind of see through. It's, it's muted, but it's it's considered a privacy fence. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. If that gives you a description that you could follow. I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware of what a privacy fence is. Thank you. But I was just trying to uh, get a picture in my head based on the descriptions that the neighbors gave if the fence was maybe damaged or needed to be repaired because they were stating that they could see through the fence of what was going on over there. But you're saying that if you catch an angle. Um, you can't see through the privacy fence looking straight at the fence. If you if you see the angle, you could get a little glimpse of what's going on imagery, but but definitely you can't see through the fence any at any point. Okay, and and, and I guess I have one final question. Um, and only answer this if you can. Um, currently now, those two garages that are supposed to be used for dock and storage, right? Um, is I, I know that based off the documents that we we read here that's supposed to be the use but is that what the current use of those no the, are? the middle bay is being used for file storage um different professions the chiropractic the physical therapy they have to maintain uh, client files or patient files for a seven year period. So there are files, they periodically go back and have them shredded every so many years. Um, the other two bays are um, storage, such as like I indicated, uh, Christmas um, decorations, things like that. There's also, there was a fit out going on this past summer, because I know someone mentioned that, oh, lights were being assembled. There was a new tenant coming into the building that was being fit out. So there's carpet in there. You'll see doors and things like that are stored there. There's also lawn care. And, uh, you know, there was a sander or salt uh, dispenser that was stored in the last bay. So it's a variety of things that are stored. It's not just, it wasn't just file storage by any means. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, Mr. Chair, through you, my final question. Um, and as far as the Bobcat goes, um, it is clear to us as commissioners um, that the, um, the that, that that equipment should have never been um, in use on the property. So, is there a particular reason again as to why um, no type of uh, permission was uh, seeked uh, by by you or someone from your company? from the town. Um, could you just kind of explain that to us, please? Well, the, the Bobcat is actually a snow removal equipment. There is an attachment called the snow thrower that goes on the front of that. And there's also a large bucket that goes on top of that. And that is under the, the carport structure. So that's the primary use. You also have, um, you know, like, as I indicated earlier, it's a commercial office building. There's a lot of de deliveries. And I know the, um, the health and wellness group that's in there, they do an awful lot of supplementation. And I know that we've offloaded, you know, product for them with, if there's not a lift gate and they're getting pallets of product delivered, it's used to, to offload a truck periodically. But 90% of what that's for is uh, for snow removal, that, that uh, skid steer. Look at the video. The video doesn't show snow removal. It shows uh, lighting equipment being loaded onto a pickup truck and a trailer mm -hmm. on the 5th of August. Okay. But if you look underneath the structure, Scott, there is, um, you know, you'll see a snow thrower that is an attachment for the Bobcat. And you'll also see a bucket that's an attachment for the Bobcat for snow removal. Mr. Carbone, you wouldn't want to listen to a Bobcat at your house at 730. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with your concerns. I, I hear your concerns. All right, let me do one last pass for commissioners. Any 
follow up questions anybody has? Dan, yeah, it looked like you were reaching for your microphone yep. there. Uh, Mr. Carbone, uh, you mentioned what was in the second and third bay. What's in the first bay? I the first missed bay, it. The first bay is uh, like there's weed whacker, there's uh, several gas cans, there's more lawn equipment uh, okay. that was in that first bay. There's some storage stuff as well. Like I said, there's some rolls of carpet, there's doors. The middle bay is all file cabinets. And I know there's a hot water heater that's ready to be replaced that's there and several doors. Like I said, there was just a tenant fit out. So there's some uh, a material that was used for the fit out, excess material. Okay. And then the third bay, I know there's two large bins of salt. There's a generator. There's, yeah, I heard what was in the second Like I said, you bay. guys could come over and look. I'll, I'll, I'll be more than willing to uh, provide access if necessary. Thank you. Sure. All right, commissioners, I'm looking. I don't see anybody else with hand up and nobody else seems to be going for their microphone. So uh, with that, I want to. I can, I can just pitch in the last words uh, as far as the, how do I say, um, everybody to be fair in how we apply the, the rules and the code. Um, I Anything that I recently wanted to do, I actually look up the code. What is the code of weather skill? And that's how I learned that you cannot build more than six uh, foot uh, tall fence. I was considering eight foot if it was possible. I called around, looked up online. As a resident, I can't do that. And one of the reasons why I would do that is because of uh, this property. I, I just feel that uh, if the rules should be applied to all the residents like me, it, they should equally be applied to commercial businesses who are utilizing residential piece of property uh, for their business. Uh, and I would also encourage you to consider some of the things that we presented as facts, even though we may not have actually documented all of these facts, but if I knew, if I only knew that I will have this opportunity to present some of the things that I am saying tonight, I would actually put a camera on my window which is very visible in the documents that you can see that were submitted in this application. I would just put a camera on my window and just stream the video and just take some snapshots of the construction that was going on, of the noise that's happening on the property. Uh, I, just, I just think that um, the code be applied equally to everybody. If Mr. Caron gets a pass, and he gets a benefit of the doubt. Uh, I would certainly seek some kind of benefit of the doubt for my eight foot fence or whatever else I need to do for my own personal needs, um, just like Mr. Caron for his business needs. Thank you. All right, and uh, thank you, Mr. Guster and Mr. Smith and Mr. Carbone. Uh, all of the comment and input is greatly appreciated. I'll do one last look here. I do not see any hands up from the commissioners. Um, with that, we can, if there's any final comment, and then I would ask for one of the commissioners to move to close the public hearing and move to our public meeting. So moved. All right, we have a motion to close the public hearing and move to our public meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Close Opposed? By Close by. Who was our first? Uh, I think we had two seconds. Who was the, so Sandra? You, you know, Sandra, you made the motion. Yes. And then Rita Ann, you seconded? Mm -hmm. You got that, Charles? Yes. All right, so we have moved into our public meeting. Just as a reminder, uh, all of you who are on with us are welcome and encouraged to stay with us. Uh, at this point, though, it is just discussion amongst the zoning enforcement officer and the commissioners as we uh, move toward vote. Uh, so with that, I'm going to read our application in for purposes of public meeting. So application number 6251-21, variance to allow two additional accessory structures on the residential portion of a split zone parcel to facilitate the storage of a plow truck and other maintenance equipment for the business use on the property location 82 Walcott Hill Road, applicant Southside Partners, LLC. 
Um, with that, I would like to make a uh, an opening comment. As we discussed, there was um, an allegation of potential bias on my part, which is something that uh, we we should and do take very seriously. So I am going to do my duty in facilitating conversation amongst the commissioners. But since we have a full slate, I'm going to recuse myself from the vote. So the other five commissioners will vote on this application tonight. And with that, I'll open it up for commissioner discussion. Any questions or points that Mr. Chair, you would like to revisit? Just a quick question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So will, will we take the all business after this, after we have the- Yes, sir. I, just, I wanted to go ahead and just do this. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. okay. okay. Paul, you wanted to say something. Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, with all due respect, this application, um, it, 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 it bothers me. I'm very disturbed by some of the things that I've uh, read in this, um, this application before us. Um, number one, um, I am bothered by the constant um, disregard of the rules. Um, that is an issue for me. Um, and in one case here, I, we could see where the, um, the building inspector clearly gave a cease and desist order, which um, was not followed. And I don't know, that just seemed to me like just a blatant disregard for the rules. Um, for me, that is troublesome. And um, I'm, well, I think there's no need for my vote tonight, but um, given that if there was a need for it, I don't think I would in good conscience be able to, um, even vote for this. Uh, yeah, and just to confirm, Paul, you will be one of the voters this evening. Um, so, well, uh, well, I guess you. I guess you know where my mind is. Then, um, this, this to me, I, I don't understand, be, because as a resident in this town, the homeowner, um, for me, if I wanted to do anything. Um, I would first do my research and find out whether or not I can erect a building in my backyard or put up a shed without getting a permit or at least call the town. It just seems to me like there was no due diligence by uh, Mr. Carbone here at any, um, at any given point, just to say that you didn't know or that there were other people that were supposed to, uh, that were there that were um, town officials and they didn't, um, they didn't say anything about it. it was good enough for me. I mean, I just had work done on my house. We had uh, um, an AC unit put in here, and it explicitly says on the building permit that it's the homeowner's responsibility. Even though I hired a contractor, it is my responsibility to ensure that it's inspected properly. And um, so. For me, that the town is doing their due diligence to say, um, at the end of the day, whether you hire someone or not, you have to make sure that this gets taken care of. And I don't feel like Mr. Carbone did any of that, his due diligence. So um, that's why this is, is very troubling to me. Um, so that's where my mind is on this. All right. Do any of the other commissioners wish to comment or any questions? Mr. Chairman, can I make a recommendation or is it? Uh, un unfortunately, at this point, we can't take additional testimony. This is just the, okay. the commissioner portion. Thank you, okay. though. Read Ann. Um, you know, I, I think that there's kind of evidence that there is a not a construction yard there, but a contractor's yard and that and that was a problem once before in a previous notice of violation. So I guess I'm kind of think that Paul is correct. We, you know, it's more than once that this has happened now. And I don't understand sometimes um, the idea of doing it first and asking permission later. Um, it's sometimes that's a good policy, but. Um, it doesn't instill confidence that if we put stipulations on that those will be followed. 
Um, so I don't know. And I don't think that we need both of those structures to house a bobcat and equipment that would just be for maintenance of that property and that property alone. And if there was any variance gonna be given, I would definitely want it to be that only equipment that was gonna be used for the maintenance of 82 to 86, <laughs> 82 to 84 Wolf Hill Road would be on that property. Not that there's a trailer there that obviously went somewhere else today. It was low, it, and it, obviously it must've been loaded. Why would you just move the empty trailer or unless you were gonna load something and bring it back? So um, I don't know if someone ha has some other ideas that convince me otherwise, but looks like a contractor's yard to me. It's going on there. All right, Dan, Sandra, Joan, any comment or question? Dan, I saw your hand up. Yeah, it's, yeah, this is a residential zone and it's going to be used for business and the properties around it are residential. And I think that's what bothers me is that to change a res, you're going to need to change the residential zone into a business zone in order to conduct the business. And in the application, it says, you know, it's going to be used for business use. And that's vague, um, in my opinion. So, you know, if the beeping and trucks are going to be loaded and um, like Rita said, the trailer left the yard. So where did it go? You know, was there other stuff on there? So is it being really used for um, businesses at that property? I don't think so. And thank you. Thank you. Um, Charles, I have a, a question that I'm going to pose to you. Um, just a reminder question. If um, there, there were several, and one of the things that we are charged to look at um, in the zoning regulations in, in the section that outlines our duties on the ZBA is um, trying to be mindful to not uh, approve things that are potentially injurious to the neighborhood. Um, and so we heard some things and there were obviously some, uh, I'll say at least differing interpretations of things that were happening. Um, if, if we, obviously if we approve the variance, that, that's pretty straightforward. If we deny the variance, um, there's opportunity for reapplication pending things changing potentially. I just want to make sure we outline our um, potential next steps here. So is the question um, whether the applicants can reapply after a certain time for the same variance? If that's the question, the answer is yes. Yes, okay. All right. Any other commissioner comment or question? A question then in relation to what you just asked, Dave, um, if the variance is not approved, then do those structures have to come down? They have to and, come down, definitely. And they have the, to come down and they can't be any parking of a bobcat or a slope, any commercial vehicle, no removal vehicle, any such thing cannot be parked there. However, um, the applicant did say that he got approval for um, parking of overflow vehicle, which simply means that a, a, an, a, a worker who drives to work and then there's no park, because he says that sometimes some of the medical offices may have, you know, a lot of clients, then they could drive their vehicle in their park. And, and, and that's, that's really um, not a, um, that's a lesser, uh, of, of, of kind of um, use there, you know, that's, that's not really something um, major by just merely parking a vehicle in, in there. So um, the applicant would have to show proof that he had that um, if you have a, an approval for that, then you must be able to present it to us. Was 
Was that, uh, and you're not addressing that to the applicant right now, right? Since we're in no, the... I'm just saying, okay. I'm just saying right. that the applicant has to show that he has approval for that. Okay. Here, if I may, can I ask Charles a question? Please. So Charles, would, um, if the applicant was supposed to go to the um, Planning and Zoning Commission to get a zone change, would that remedy any of these issues that he's currently having? Well, if he goes for a zone change, um, he that simply means that the residential portion would be changed to commercial. So, so that means um, he could do certain things there in, in, in that um, section. He could operate business from there, but not. it's not necessary that he can be, I mean, I don't know what the board would, um, would, would say or what they would approve. So I, I don't wanna say what would be approved from what would not be approved. But it's pretty much, it's simply, it's simply that the entire building now would be general business district and there will be no question of a residential um, use. And to, and to that point, I mean, that is sort of at the heart of one of the other things we're supposed to consider, which is the hardship. Uh, I mean, that seems to be part, at least of the hardship that would because be. No, because no, no, when, this, when, that, when that zone change, if that zone change was made, then um, anything else the the applicant the owners want to do they would have to still go through um either the board of either the planning and zoning commission or the zoning enforcement officer all right and, and, um, go ahead paul um is there any record of the applicant ever applying for a zone change and it being i not 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 to, not to my knowledge I don't know. I, I haven't seen anything in the, in the records that shows that they did. Okay, thank you. Hey, Charles, I want to go back. Uh, there was reference to at least a video, and I know there were the, there were some other uh, photos that were referenced that we were uh, trying to potentially share. Uh, I think one the video was from maybe from Mr. Smith, and I know the applicant and. Uh, maybe Mr. Gunter had photos they were hoping to present. Um, have you seen all of those things? And, and if so, are those things that the commissioners should take into account? I, those that I present to you in the exhibits are pretty much what I have seen. Um, I haven't seen anything from Mr. Um, Mr. Gustin, Mr. Adam, Guster, Adam, I'm sorry. I believe I pronounced the name incorrectly. I'm sorry about that. Adam Guster, sorry, Mr. Mr. Guster. I haven't seen anything from him, but I've seen pictures, and the pictures that I get from um, Mr. Smith is just pictures of the, you know, the building himself, what that he can see from the yard. Then the last one I got from him was this video of the, them unloading some some very large um, items there. Um, Yes. So, yes. They were they were loading, Charles. They were yeah, loading. But, but loading. We, we, Charles, we don't. We, we should not engage right now yeah, in this okay, portion. Sorry. That's all right. Thank you. Um. All right. So I, I'll get to the reason for my question. Is just make sure we map out options. Obviously, it comes to a vote. Either there's going to be approval or denial. Um, as we have done some in the past, when there has been potentially additional information that may be beneficial there is an opportunity to um the, yeah and, and the applicant to table if necessary so that's why that's why i'm asking the question charles yeah, and the applicant can always okay can always apply again like you say he um he can apply for this clearance after a certain time he could go to the planning and zoning commission for its own change all right so commissioners um Anybody else wish to weigh in, offer perspective, any clarifications from Charles? And if uh, there are none, then yeah. Paul, go ahead. Um, it is clear based on um, the fact that 
a portion of this parcel is residential, that it may be in the best interest of the applicant to uh, go to the planning um, and zoning commission to seek a zone change. Um, again, I, I, I think um, even if, and that's a long stretch, that this variance was supposed to be grant was granted, they're still going to remain. There's still going to be issues based on the zoning. So um, I think uh, that it, with all due respect, this is um, it's probably in the applicant's best interest to uh, seek that zone change first before um, seeking this variance. That that is all I have. Um, I actually. All right, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go um, ahead, Joan. Yeah, I actually had a question regarding that because I'm not sure that avenue would necessarily be the best outcome for the neighborhood and for the residents. And um, you know, I I think there would I think it's there should be a way to reasonably accommodate a snowplow, you know, that services this property. And I I don't think necessarily going down the road of having the, the you know that residential parcel rezoned as commercial is necessarily going to result in an improvement of the quality of life for the neighbors but you know an accommodation for the snowplow you know if it's done the right way i think would be less impactful to the neighborhood so you know i i'm just not sure um I mean, today's vote, I thought strictly was about the structures, correct? Whether those those tent-like structures are to be approved or for a variance for them is approved yeah. or not, correct? That's strictly what we're voting on, right? Yeah. Yeah, so just to, to read officially from, it's to facilitate the storage of a plow truck and other um, maintenance equipment for business use on the property. So we're, the variance is to allow two additional accessory structures on the property to facilitate the storage of a plow truck and other maintenance equipment. All right, uh, reading Ann, go ahead. I, I think John has a valid point, which is what, what I was trying to say when we, if we were gonna approve the variance, it would be for something specific for this property and this property only to be used. Um, I personally don't think that the carport is needed to house a bo the bobcat and the bobcat shouldn't be used, you know, at off hours. But, you know, I, I know that what you mean, Joan, is that we're supposed to be looking at whether or not to prove these two structures or not. There's a lot more going on here that I think Charles has to take on, <laughs> so. All right, I'm giving a scan of my screen. Uh, without any additional question or comment, I'll just review. So we would be at this point looking for a motion either to accept as submitted, to accept with stipulations, to deny the variance, or to table for a future meeting if there was um, desire to ingest more information. So if there was anyone who would like to make a motion, on this application, the yeah, floor is yours. Say one more thing, before, please do. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Maybe um, a possibility would be if the variance does not pass tonight. I mean, that Mr. Carbone could come back with something. You know, if we come back with exactly the same thing, I think there's a certain amount of time you have to wait. But it could be for a a different structure and and then more targeted towards what you know that the commission looks like they're concerned about. But otherwise I will make, um, what kind of motion do you want, Dave? Uh, so, it, and it's not, I just want to give you the option. Oh. So we can accept, okay. you can make a, we can have a motion to accept the application as submitted, a motion to accept it with stipulations that you'd have to attach, uh, a motion to deny the application or a motion to table the public meeting on this application until our next meeting. Would a motion to table give um, all the parties more time to provide additional information? 
it would give us uh yeah so we would not at this point reopen the public hearing but if things that were brought up during the hearing uh if those were things that the commissioners thought would be beneficial to see we would be able to take those into account and ask any additional you know clarifying questions so we would basically pick up at this point having seen additional information and then rejoining the public meeting on this application if we do that and in fact that's our next item of business is picking up uh a previous application where we had done that in our july meeting i believe it was If we and, and Charles, let me, I'm sorry, Charles, let me just clarify. Are you comfortable that I have uh, laid out the options as I should have? Absolutely. Okay. If we table it tonight, can Mr. Carbone alter what he wants in this application at all? Or is it be exactly the same application that we'll, we'll vote on next time? It would be exactly the same application. You could not alter the application. Okay. The board could make like, like the chairman said, the board could vary. The board could make stipulations, or you know. Um, but it would still be those two structures. Yes. Okay. All right then. Um, I would make a motion to deny the application as presented. Second. All right. So we have a motion to deny the application from Rita Ann. It's been seconded by Sandra. Uh, again, as I stated at the beginning of our public meeting, I'm going to recuse myself. So the other five commissioners present will be doing the voting. So all in favor of the motion, which again, to clarify, the motion is to deny the application. So all in favor of that motion. Aye. 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 All right. So we have five and all opposed. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, just to clarify, the motion itself was to deny the application, which was affirmed by a vote of 5-0. So the application is denied. And uh, with that, Charles, you will be able to follow up with the applicant for additional Absolutely. questions, next yes, steps. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I will okay. follow up with other issues that relates to this denial, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, with that, we have one other item of business. Application number 6250-21, variance from section 3.7 dimensional requirements to allow front yard setback of 33 feet as against 40 feet minimum required to facilitate the installation of a standby generator. Location 80, 80 Stillwald Road. Okay. Applicant Zenin Skinesny. Uh, this again was tabled from our July meeting. We had had the hearing and we moved to public meeting. So we're picking up here in the, uh, well, actually verify me on that, Charles. We were in the public meeting on this one, correct? So, so yes, this is, yeah, all, okay. this is actually all business. Um, right, so I just wanted to make sure and, I was right um, on that part. So and, um, there, there's an update you I, have on this one. So I subsequently um, received a letter from the applicant and um, it says zoning board of appeals and it's dated August 13th, 2021. And it says, um, re Dan Henry, 80 Stillwell Drive, Wethersfield CT 06109. There, sir, slash madam, this is to withdraw my request for variance application as we were able to make accommodations. Thank you for your time and consideration. Best regards, Dion. Henry, who's property owner. And um, I may just add that, um, just for the record and for the um, board's knowledge that um, the applicant identified, uh, although this application was previously approved for the rear yard, the applicant found um, a spot in the side yard that would allow her to install the generator and have the required five feet setback from the property boundary. So then there would be no requirement for a variance because I could have, so I went ahead and approved um, the application for the um, location of the generator as submitted. Okay, all right. So what we saw, they changed plans and yes. thus just withdrew the application. Okay, so no need to bring that to a vote? No. All right. Um, and that means our 
Looks like final item of business is approval of those July minutes. Um, I don't have in front of me who we, I think, were there four of us who were present for July? Oh, okay. Um, or was it five? Uh, Sandra, do you have the minutes in front of you? I don't have them in front of me, no, but okay. that was where you did it in person, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to, there, I'm trying to remember who. Dan was there. Oh, Paul was there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've got a, a, a certainly a, a good enough. Um, uh, yeah, because we had more. We had yeah, we had a, pretty much the same people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You have a quorum. All right. So okay. we will ask for a ask for a motion to approve July minutes. Um. There's just. I don't, oh, there's, correct. I'm sorry. I should ask that first. Go ahead, Rita. Yeah. Um. It says Elizabeth Keys was absent, but she was no longer um, a member. Is that correct? Um, no, that was after that. I think it was after that that her membership became um, came to an end. It was oh, after okay. that. June thirtieth okay. is when her. I thought it was June thirtieth. Yeah, that's I thought. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I think that's why she did not. Meeting because she was, I mean, so she was absent. I guess that's technically you know, <laughs> that's true. You know, exactly. accurate, but uh, <laughs> as to whether that should count against her, I guess is the question. Um, Charles, is that a change that uh, so, so, um, Elizabeth Keys, um her commission was no longer, um, yeah. was not extended, was not approved, so she, yeah. Okay, so she would have technically not been a commissioner during the, at the point of the July meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay, all right, so we should, uh, uh, for any motion that we make, we should ask that that edit be made so that Elizabeth is not uh, unduly criticized for not making a meeting she wasn't supposed to come to. Yeah, I felt bad for it. That's why I said that. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good call out. Good call out. There's also comments in here that it would appear that she she spoke, but she wasn't at the meeting. Uh, hmm. what? I my, oh, come, to, come to think of it. Elizabeth Keys, she was at the August meeting. We didn't have an August meeting. Oh, no, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm we sorry. had a July meeting, not an August July meeting. meeting. I, she sorry. was there. She was there. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. She, was, she wasn't there. She wasn't no. there. No. Nah. Oh. Because I remember we were waiting. Mm -hmm. That was oh, the only okay. meeting we had. Um, so that simply means then that person. it's probably because she was um, no longer um, required right. to be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So that would mean that you would need to correct my um, yeah, my what? comments there on the bottom, um, the second to last of a paragraph there on page three. Um, what did it say? So on page three, yeah, there, yeah. And also read it, I think this is also in Rita's comments or no, no, no. Um, below Rita's comment too, um, you start off. So the, if you go from the bottom of page three, the second to last, well, the second to last full paragraph, you start off by saying Vice Chair Key also echoes similar opinion. Um, she wasn't there, so you'd have to strike that. Um, and then the paragraph below that where you said Commissioner Brady commented that he basically agreed with uh, Commissioner Pelletier and Vice Chair um, Keys. You have to strike that also. Okay. And let's see. Um, and I don't have it in front of me, I will confess. Is it seemed that, was there someone else that was mistaken for Vice Chair Keys? Is that what's happening in the minutes? It seems so. Um, it was, was that you, Sandra? And, so. and you know what? You know what? To um, last 
minutes, um, I must confess there was some issue with last last minutes. We had a in person meeting, and so um, the, the the notes notes weren't properly taken. Um, the recording was done, and um, notes weren't properly taken. The recorder was very low in volume, so I had to. Um, write most of this minute myself because we were left in, it, in here. Before so. you go on, Charles, this minute that you sent us. Um, okay. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, so I'm just wondering. I, I'm wondering so if we I may want to. I, I had to um, like start a transcribe from the from the recorder and, and um, like 15 what the from memory, so to speak, because um, there are yeah. certain, certain things that weren't really caught on the tape recorder, but would have been um, recorded um, by writing, you know. So um, the fact that someone wasn't there to do that um, kind of threw us off. So that, can I make a different I mean, motion? It was, yeah, we, we don't have a motion yet. So what, uh, whatever we would, if we want to. I take the blame yeah. for that minute. Can we take? Um, can we table the minutes yeah. until the next meeting and after we get this all so sorted out then um, we uh we we absolutely can we just need somebody to so move and second and we shall vote on that so I'll, I'll make a motion to table the minutes uh the july minutes until our next meeting second second yeah. all right uh, so, rita? yeah mm -hmm. paul rita was in with the second uh and we'll say all in favor aye, aye. All opposed. All right. Uh, before we close, just an official uh, welcome again to Joan. Thank you for joining us and sticking with us for uh, what turned out to be a longer than usual meeting. Um, My pleasure. Thanks, thanks to everybody for your continued service and uh, uh, questions and input and dialogue and um, and you know challenging questions uh, in particular. So appreciate that, Charles. As always, we. Thank you for the work you put into all this. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the week. Dave, I just sure. wanted too. to say, you know, I sorry about the comments about bias. I think oh, you, I, you've listen, done I, I, all you can to keep us on track and such. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. It, but no, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it, lucky that uh, thank you all for showing up because, you know, any we, we want to avoid any potential right. um, yep. conflict of interest in that way. So, uh, but thank you for that. I appreciate that. All right. All Bye. right. Well, we are adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night, everyone. See you again next month. Bye bye. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully bye. in person. Yes. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me end the recording.